So what we've got here is trash all over the sidewalk, newspapers, wrapping papers. We've got an old sock, cigarette butts, urine all over the ground. Ben it's, Nichols uh, is showing me a bus disgusting. stop on Fifth and Avenue in Hillcrest. It's horrible. And you can kind of smell it here too. <laughs> yeah, depending on the way the wind blows, you get a little surprise when you're walking down the street. I can't imagine anybody waiting at this bus stop. Nichols heads the Hillcrest Business Association, which pays for a monthly trash pickup and power washing here. But he says it gets dirty again fast. Homeless people often dig through the stop's trash can or go to the bathroom behind an adjacent electrical box. This actually happened. I called MTS to find out who cleans their bus stops. And they said, what bus stop? And I told them the location. And they gave, them, they gave me my own number because they're like, oh, contact the local business association. They'll do it. I'm like, I'm the local business association. Nichols also chairs the board of the Uptown Community Parking District, which manages money collected by parking meters in Hillcrest, Bankers Hill, and Mission Hills. He wants to use some of that money for more frequent cleaning of the bus stop. He says that would make it more attractive and pleasant for people to take public transit into Hillcrest. And for every person who rides the bus, that's one less car taking up a parking space. But there's a problem. In terms of deploying all the creative solutions that the neighborhood has come up with, we haven't been able to do that. And the fact that there's $4 million that's built up over years and years and years demonstrates that the spigot is off. We are unable to spend this money. Actually, it's even more than that. About $4.7 million are sitting in a bank account waiting to be spent on making it easier to get into and around the Hillcrest area. That's because state and local laws strictly limit how these parking districts can spend their money. They're allowed to promote biking or public transit with the goal of reducing the demand for parking. But will beautifying a bus stop actually do that? The city attorney's office says it's a stretch. And then um, another thing we should reconsider is our narrow city attorney interpretation of parking district expenditures. The, the, the financial benefits need to go beyond paint. Howard Blackson is an urban planner who works on issues of development and street design. He brought up parking districts during a presentation at a recent city council committee meeting. And we should be able to have parking benefits districts that manage access to the places the parking is intended to serve, that manage wayfinding, signage, lighting, sidewalks, the pedestrian, transit, support for these parking districts that we can't do right now because our interpretation is very uh, risk adverse and says it's just for paint and replacing meters. I sat down later to interview Blackson. He acknowledges the legal limitations. If the city allows parking districts to spend however they want, it could get sued. And the parking districts are using some money to promote alternative transportation. Still, he says other cities governed by the same state laws are doing it better. You are able to find parking as easy as you're able to find a business, as easy as you're able to find uh, where you're supposed to go. Parking districts have been the source of hand-wringing in San Diego for years. The city auditor did a report on problems with them in late 2014. The city council even reformed its parking district ordinance two years ago, aiming to give districts more spending flexibility. We're trying to keep the neighborhood clean. But, but Nichols says the policy to is still too car centric, even in an era when San Diego is supposed to be cutting back on driving. San Diego, as a region, has doubled down on buses and bicycles. So we should be able to deploy these monies for things like making it enjoyable to ride the bus. The city attorney's office could issue a new memo with less restrictions on parking district spending, but a spokesman says there are no plans to do that. So any changes will likely have to come from the mayor and city council. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.